Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos on specifically sort of data representation and maths for computer scientists. So we're looking first of all at number systems, so a few different sets of numbers which we can use. Really a number system is a way of specifying a range of different possible numbers. So first of all, let's look at natural numbers. So natural numbers are those used for counting and ordering. So we are representing them in set notation because set notation is a really nice way of showing sets of numbers, of course. So here we are allocating the letter N for natural numbers. We'll come back to that particular font in a second. Uh, you can see we've got set notation, we've got our curly bra braces and we've got numbers within it. So natural numbers are including um, all the integers from zero to infinity. So the dot, dot, dot refers to carrying this pattern on. I'm not gonna write out until infinity for obvious reasons but we're going to infinity and also dot 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 under a set notation suggests we're going to follow that pattern you know the next number in this series is not 4.5 because it's not following that pattern but anyway natural numbers are those which are non-negative and also it does include zero so bear that in mind negative five is not a natural number because we can't use it for counting or ordering so just going back to that actual, maybe not font, but the, the way we are writing that letter N. So we represent number sets, number systems using what is called blackboard bold characters. So we have that sort of double line in the letter. But of course on paper, you can just write it as a normal N. Do not spend time in an exam writing it, how it looks like it will be printed on a computer. So that's how you represent it, ideally in blackboard bold, but just use a normal letter is fine. A related concept to natural numbers is that of an ordinal number. So an ordinal number is a natural number, but it's given to label the position of an element, an element being an item in a set. So for example, this set here called S, we've got three elements in it, A, B, C, and we can label each one with an ordinal number. So first is an ordinal number, second is an ordinal number, and so is third. They're all ways to label a position of an element in a set. Likewise in programming we have arrays, except we start counting from zero, so we kind of have a zero item in an array, but it's the same idea, we're counting and we're labeling uh, a position. Our second set of numbers are integer numbers, so integers are whole numbers, in other words, numbers which can be written without a fractional part. And the letter we assign to integer numbers is Z, which is a little bit confusing, but it comes from a German word Zahlen, which means numbers in German. So. The integer numbers are these whole numbers, so they include the set of the natural numbers, but also their negatives, right? So we have the natural numbers, but also the negative um, as well. So we can go up to plus affinity and negative affinity for these. So if we want to represent it in a Venn diagram-ish representation, the integer numbers do encompass the natural numbers, and therefore we can represent it with our proper subset notation, where we have this C looking symbol, which says we've got uh, every natural number is within the set of the integer numbers, except we have a few extra um, integer numbers too, or the negative ones, essentially. Our third set of numbers to look at are our rational numbers. So a rational number is where we have that fractional part. So we have those which can be written as a ratio of two integers. And the letter we have for this is Q. You can think of it as being representing quotient, which you associate with division, and also rational as in ratio, you know, just having a fraction really. So this set comprehension is very confusing to look at, but we can read it as in saying, so all the numbers within this set are P divided by Q, such that P and Q are elements of the instant numbers, and also Q can't be zero. If we had Q being zero, we have a divided by zero issue, which is just undefined. So it can't be zero, um, our denominator can't be zero, but P can be any number as long as it's an integer, and so can Q except for zero. That's what this is trying to say. Uh, so because Q can equal one, you know, this allows us to have Q being equal to one, every integer is also a rational number. So don't just think, you know, it's only fractions, an integer can be a rational number two because we can also express it as a ratio of two integers, in this case, just denominated being one. And again, using our nice visual representation, we can think of having our integers within our rational numbers and within our integers, we've got natural numbers as well. And our integers, Z, are also a proper subset of our rational numbers, Q, because we've also got numbers which are rational, but are not integers. So for example, 2.5 is a ratio of five divided by two. 2.5 isn't an integer, therefore it's belonging only to the rational numbers, not to the integer numbers. I think it's also important to make clear that rational numbers can recur. So for example, 0.33333 recurring is a rational number because it can be represented as one third, and one third is a ratio of two integers. 
Okay, and on the flip side, we have our irrational numbers, so numbers which cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. Numbers like pi, like phi, this golden ratio number, and root two are all elements of the irrational number set, which you represent with i written in blackboard bold. So these are harder to define in nice set notation because they are more by nature sporadic and don't follow many patterns. So these numbers don't terminate, which is why we cannot represent them as a ratio of two integers. Also, they don't recur, so they have no repeating pattern. So pi goes on forever, you can keep calculating more digits to it, but there isn't a pattern we can use to represent it as a ratio of two integers. So for example, root two is 1.41421 and so on and so on. That goes on forever, it never terminates, but we haven't got a repeating pattern which would allow us to represent it as a ratio of two integers like a rational number would. So these numbers are slightly outsiders to this whole set of numbers. We have our previous sets all <laughs> relating very nicely, but the rational numbers do sit outside this because they don't belong to any of those sets. However, they do belong to the real numbers. So real numbers are the set of all possible real world quantities. So anything we can, um, any number really falls under this real number set. The exception being imaginary numbers, which we won't go into because it's not really a computer science topic. So um, we can represent every value in the real number set, which we represent with R on a number line. And we use real numbers for measurement. So whereas we said right at the start, natural numbers are for counting, we now use real numbers for measurement because we can get as specific as we want to. For example, 2.67 is not a natural number, but we can use it to measure somebody's height. So now we've got a fairly complete way of interacting between all these numbers. So really, we can now surround the irrational numbers because they exist in the real world. They belong to the set of real numbers as, to, as do our rational integer and natural numbers as well. So we can represent um, uh, those belonging all to our real numbers and also we can represent our rational numbers being a proper subset of our real numbers. And finally to flex a bit more set notation we can use set difference to now express irrational numbers and how they relate to real numbers. So an irrational number are all of the numbers in real which are not in our rational set. I think the minus sign is a little bit better at showing the set difference. So again, our irrational numbers are all of our real numbers, subtracting the ones which are rational. So I suppose our main takeaway here is the natural numbers are used for counting, real numbers are used for measurement, and try and get in your head how the other sets relate to each other. Be careful with your letters, because you might think what well, I stands for integer, but if, in this case Z stands for integer. Likewise, real could stand for rational, but actually Q stands for rational. So it's a bit confusing, but as long as you learn the different sets and the difference, you can't go too wrong.